you will now learn how to perform primary data collection. That is, how you collect the relevant water samples for your study. Systematic collection of primary data is a key part of field-based research. You should always use standard data collection method so other researchers will be able to validate your research. It is important that you know how to collect, label, transport, register, and store your samples for data analysis. So, please follow the instruction provided in this film and remember to check available literature for further details. Our activity today will involve the monitoring of our marine ecosystem health and it has two components. One component is uh, pelagic monitoring, uh, which will involve the monitoring of uh, uh, water quality, nutrients, and chlorophyll. And uh, also we'll have, uh, the next component is uh, a benthic uh, monitoring, where we'll, uh, we'll monitor the, the coral reef ecosystem. We will have a, a multi sound emitter that will record uh, different parameters involving the uh, salinity, water temperature, pH, and oxygen level. And uh, in benthic monitoring, we will uh, record the coral cover, hard coral cover, Algal, uh, algae cover and other uh, coral reef uh, organisms. We are going to measure how much coral is uh, alive and how much is dead, how much uh, algae are there and other reef organisms. In this monitoring we have permanent plots where we repeatedly take measurements. To have a good representation of a reef, the plots are located at different zones. The reef flat, reef crest, and reef slope. In addition to benthic cover, we determine the number of hard coral recruits as well as slow moving invertebrates. The invertebrates include sea urchins and crown of thorn starfish. The coral reef is a home of a variety of reef fishes. In this monitoring program, fish are also counted and make a good indicator of a healthy coral reef. It can became, become difficult because uh, we have bleaching, the corals are already stressed by higher temperature, and then you have these uh, uh, activities. So these activities can cause the, uh, the already stressed coral to be uh, more damaged. Here we are in next station and we are going to take the measurement of different parameters. And we have our multi sound here, and this is a computer part, and that is a... Okay, the next step is to take the measurements. Uh, we have to insert the probe system, or probe part in water, and we are starting to the water surface there, to the surface, then we'll move it to maybe up to 10 meters, or up to 5 to 10 meters. Now sampling is in process. Sampling is in process. Once they are coming from the field, we have to export the data recorded from the field. We have to export the data to PC. This data is about the physical, physical characteristic of water, I mean of water sample, that include uh, temperature, 
pH, turbidity, salinity, conductivity, and others. So now we want to export the collected data. The data what, which we collected from the field, we want to export to the PC. So let's see how we are doing. We have to disconnect the computer part. We have to disconnect. Now we are connecting to the PC. Yeah. For the first step, we have to connect the computer part to the PC. Then we have to open the Core DSS program that has been installed in our PC. This is our program. Sorry. To collect seawater samples at different depths, we need a water sampler. On the rope, you can see different depth markers in red. Now, we send the open sampler down into the water column. The messenger is released, which closes the sampler, retaining the water at the desired depth. The water sampler is retrieved full of water. Before placing the samples in the bag, we note where, when, and at what depth the sample has been collected. Here we have uh, standards and also we have reagents. So our reagents we have prepared uh, previously because of the time and also we have our reagents also prepared uh, so it's to save the, the time. And uh, by using uh, these uh, standards, we have to, to measure the different concentrations and to put it in the test tubes, to bring it there in a water bath for 30 minutes. And then after 30 minutes, we have to take our test tubes and to put the sample, the standards in cuvettes and the cuvettes will be introduced to the spectrophotometer for reading. So that readings we are going to use to get the calibration curve. And that calibration curves will be used to calculate the concentrations of the nitrate that is in our sample. We have our samples here taken from Bowie at a five depth. So we want to analyze them. We want to take one after the other, opening it put it in a syringe. Put it in a beaker. Then we have our water that has already been filtered. We have to take a five mil from this micro pipette, but we have to adjust it first of all to see that is 5.00. And now have to take like we have to keep like this straight, compress it, and then introduce in the sample, and then release it. So this is the five mil. And this five mil we have to put in a, uh, test tubes. And these test tubes uh, will be labeled as by five meter depth. 
by using this uh, marker pen. So I have to write here, Bawe. five meter depth. Put it here. Then we have to put our reagents inside these test tubes. We have our vanadium three chlorides. We have to put 0 0.26 mil. Have to use this micro pipette. And already calibrated here is 0 0.26. Open it very carefully. And tag 0 0.26. And put it in this sample. We have to put uh, grease reagents, and this is our grease reagent. And here we have to put 0 0.25 mil. So I have to put here 0 0.25, and I have to take the new one. This is. Put it here all together. After that, we have to cover it with its leads. And this will be put in a water bath for 30 minutes. This uh, standard has already been used for the preparation of the calibration curve. But the reagent, uh, we want to use it for putting in the sample. Uh, that samples will be introduced in the water bath. And after 30 minutes, the sample, we are going to take it to our spectrophotometer. No, the spot photometer will give us the absorbance. And that absorbance will be used to find the concentrations according to the calibration curve. Yeah, we have to open our software. This is Thermo Insight. We have to create the methods according to the number of samples that we have. But here we have our standards. And we have five test tubes. After that, our instrument is ready to measure uh, the absorbance. So we have to put our sample one after the other but you have to keep in mind that the clear area here should point the light that is passing. To put it here inside. Click OK. The reading is 0 0.319 absorbance. So this is how to analyze our nitrate by using the spectrophotometric methods. And after once we have our data of absorbance and the concentration, we have to plot the calibration curve because these are standards. So we have to use that value so as to get our calibration curve. And to use the calibration curve in order to have the right concentrations for our samples. This is our calibration curve that uh, uh, we have obtained this calibration curve by introducing a sample standards which have different concentrations. Our concentrations was uh, from 0 0.01 up to uh, 0 0.25. Uh, after that, preparing that uh, standard concentrations, uh, we introduced the one after the other, but we started with the blank one. The blank here was water. 
So water was introduced to the machines and uh, the absorbance was uh, 0 0.00. And uh, also uh, we try to, uh, to do it in triplicates. As you see the data here, one, two, three, all of them read 0 0.000, like that one. Uh, after that, we took our our standards, which has the concentration of 0 0.01, and the absorbance was 0 0.037. And uh, that one was read from our equipment in triplicates. And uh, from there, we took uh, standards which has the concentration of 0 0.05 and the actual reading was 0 0.110. After completion of that uh, uh, standard being introduced into the machine and the reading was obtained like that you see there, we got our calibration curve like this one. So this is our calibration curve, and the equipment show that uh, our method has already been calibrated because there is a, a green light here that showed us that uh, uh, the calibration is good for our equipment and is ready for us to uh, carry out other uh, measurement from our uh, seawater samples. Our R square is, uh, here is 1.00, and also the frequency that was set here, absorbance, uh, the frequency was set to 540 uh, nanometer for this, uh, new, uh, for this uh, nitrate uh, measurement. So <clears throat> from here, we see that uh, our equation has already been uh, available here from the, the, the machine, which is uh, uh, 2.441 uh, C plus 0 0.00. Yeah, from this calibration curve that you have also, uh, that we have already obtained from this uh, equipment, uh, we want to use these equations in order to calibrate the actual concentration of the uh, seawater uh, samples. This is how we collect, process, and analyze the samples for the marine ecosystem health. When the data has been translated, policymakers can use it for the management of marine habitats and for planning of the coastal areas. And also the data can be a baseline information for the areas that have no previous information. And the data can be used in the monitoring of the well-being of the marine habitats. I hope you have now gained some knowledge that you can use for your research. Good luck.